Yeah. All right. So firstly, thanks everyone for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, for those that don't know me, um, my name's Luke Turnbull. I'm the chairperson of ADG. Um, on here tonight, we've also got Emily Cameron, who is the secretary, um, Ash, um, who some of you won't recognize without his helmet, um, is our uh, director of communications, um, and Simon heads up the state rep uh, subcommittee. Um, we've also got Ryan and Matt Wallace, uh, who are also on that state rep subcommittee, uh, representing South Australia and New South Wales as well. Uh, so here we are, we've uh, developed a strategic plan uh, and we're here tonight to have a bit of a town hall talk about it, um, how, what we did, how we got there, um, what the future looks like uh, and answer any of the questions that have been sent through as well. Uh, some of those were really simple, like can you record it? Um, so we've already solved that one um, and hopefully the people that are watching this later um, know the answer to that. Um, so yeah, I've been in the sport for 11 or 12 years. Um, M's been around longer than I have. Uh, and when we all first started, um, it was a very, very small community uh, and it was easy to make decisions because everyone knew what everyone, who everyone was. Uh, and you could have that kind of straight up conversation with the same 20 people um, when you played one of 10 events in the year because that's all there was. Um, you know, the number of people on this meeting is bigger than my first tournament. Um, so that's what the growth has been um, over that, that last decade or so. Um, so we started formulating um, what we needed to do from a strategic plan perspective last year. Um, we put together some very basic requirements uh, and we started the process. Um, and one of the first questions um, that's been asked is why do we need a strategic plan? Um, and I've kind of given a bit of background on that. Um, it's pretty easy to not have one when it's a small group, um, but as it gets bigger, uh, you need a way forward. Um, and as we've written there, we didn't have one. Um, that's the first reason. Uh, as we move kind of more towards structured sports governance, um, not just with us, but um, sport in Australia in general, um, the need for strategic planning grows a bit more um, as we grow as well. Um, so from that strategic plan, um, we wanted to come up with a process to work out where we can focus our efforts, uh, where we invest our money, um, and, you know, what our vision and values are um, to make sure that, that they're met uh, with the growth that we'll have you know, in the next five years. Uh, and that's what this plan sets out to do. Uh, so we engaged um, with Mike McLaughlin uh, from McLaughlin Sports Consultancy. Um, we can provide the link to their website, um, but extensive experience uh, in sport and recreation um, as an administrator and um, working on strategic plans. Uh, and he's done it all, um, Commonwealth Games, Swimming Australia, um, various state uh, and national bodies, net, netball, um, and a whole bunch of niche sports as well. Um, surfing in its younger days, um, calisthenics. Um, so he hasn't just been at the top level of top sports. Um, he's also got niche sport experience, uh, which we found quite valuable because while we're still growing, we're still very much a niche sport in the eyes of the broader public. Um, so we worked with Mike um, to develop um, the five-year strategic plan um, because we'd originally been introduced to him uh, from his work on the AFDA strategic plan for our open flying disc sports. Um, and that allowed him to get a bit of a, a running start with ADG uh, because he already had a pretty good insight into uh, the context of which ADG works uh, under the AFDA banner. Um, any questions uh, before we move on to what the process looks like? Cool. Uh, so, as I said, we began talking about needing this uh, sometime last year. Um, and uh, with the board we had last year, we started uh, compiling some of these documents, um, getting some initial quotes. Um, we had 
you know, a variety of quotes from, um, firstly from MSC, uh, but also a number of um, smaller places uh, based in WA, um, the company that had at, had then recently completed the WAFTA, uh, so the Western Australian Flying Disc Association uh, strategic plan, uh, and another one, I think, based out of Geelong. Um, the decision we made was to go with um, um, McLaughlin Sports Consultancy just because of the, the professionalism of the proposal that they put towards us, um, as well as the experience we had uh, with the AFTA proposal as well. Uh, so from that, um, an opportunity, a number of opportunities um, were identified. Um, McLaughlin Sports Consultancy reviewed all of our documents. Um, so that included all of our social media content and accounts, um, all of our policies and documents that we have um, on our website, uh, and all of the rules of association um, that we have as well. Uh, and then it also delved into what the relationship we have with AFTA looks like. Uh, as well as the relationship we have with PDG and uh, Wolfdorf as well. Um, and in addition to that, um, part of the AFTA strategic plan that was conducted, um, 264 people identified as being disc golfers or involved in disc golf. Um, and I think, I can't remember the percentage, but it was a very high percentage of the participants uh, for the AFTA survey. I think it was about 34%. <laughs> okay, so th a third of the respondents identified as um, you know, participating in disc golf, either as players, or admins, um, retailers, and things like that. So it was a good basis um, for them to start working on the opportunities paper. Uh, so while they worked on that, um, we put out a call for um, expressions of interest to join the project reference group. Uh, and from that, uh, we had a mixed group of six people. Um, we tried to include um, from kind of all parts uh, of like the sport that we have here, uh, both male and female players, um, professional players, amateur players, um, but not just players as well. We wanted um, people that had experience uh, running tournaments. We wanted people that had experience um, with retail and course design because uh, you know, the sport of disc golf isn't just for the players. Um, you know, there's, there's a wider picture that we wanted to discuss and, and have insights on. Um, so from that expressions of interest, uh, we formed a project reference group uh, with six of us on it. Uh, and we started meeting with um, McLaughlin Sports Consultancy um, once a month or thereabouts. Uh, and then we would meet on a, an ad hoc basis based on uh, some deadlines and some deliverables um, that we were required to get together. Um, the last kind of major input session we had after that um, was the strategic uh, planning jam session. Uh, we extended that to even more stakeholders. Um, and that was across the entire spectrum, um, like a, a broader scope um, than the six that were just on the project reference group, um, hoping to get their insights. So people that have been involved um, from the admin perspective, the media perspective, retail and course install, um, players that have played both locally um, and internationally, um, amateurs, pros that have played both here and over in the, on the pro tour. Um, so we tried to get that um, that experience on that meeting so we could have a variety of discussions uh, and viewpoints. Now we also extended the invite to um, AFDA, um, but they did not attend. Um, and the PDGA, while they would have liked to attend, uh, the time that we had it wasn't very suitable for them. Um, but um, they were interested uh, in the outcomes of um, what those discussions were. Um, I'll just see there's a chat. Um, who were the yeah. six? Yeah. Um, oh, it was such a long time ago. Um, so myself and M were on there from the board. Um, Chris Scott from Geelong joined us. Um, Corey from Brisbane uh, joined us. Uh, Hayden from Mount Gambia um, was one of those. And Dave. Oh, it's, um, sorry, Em? Jason. Oh, Vito and Jason Vito was the other, yeah. Yeah, and Dave, yeah. And Dave, can I see, yeah. Is that seven? Or... That is seven. Sorry. Was, it, was, there a, was there an extra person um, and we didn't count ourselves in? Yeah, maybe I forgot to count myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so after we had that session, uh, it was a, a Sunday um, 
ran for four hours. Um, we'd given Mike uh, and Belinda, I think, uh, is the other person that, that we worked with, um, kind of what the background was of all of the people. Uh, and he came up with a way to kind of mix um, all of the, the skills and backgrounds and knowledge that people have. Um, anyone that's been involved in a session like that, um, they can be quite lengthy, um, but they were kind of kept fresh with um, breakout rooms. So you know, the, those um, 23 people were split up to discuss similar topics with different viewpoints. Um, from that, um, we got the draft uh, of what has become our strategic plan. Uh, so when that draft first came through, um, it came to the project reference group. Um, so the seven of us that were part of that uh, initial group, uh, we reviewed that, provided feedback, uh, and then a second draft came back, which we then shared with the board, um, provided feedback again, uh, and then we sought feedback from AFTA as well, uh, because anyone that's read the strategic plan, uh, a number of the points in there are, are talk about forging better relationships uh, with AFTA. Um, and that's something that we believed was what AFTA had wanted uh, based on the outcomes of their own strategic plan. Um, but you know, we needed to see if they were happy for us to lock them into our strategic plan as well. Um, and since they're in there, um, that was a pretty positive response from them as well. Uh, any questions? Uh, regarding the process now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, cool. So this is the outcome. Um, so there was a plan on a page uh, version that was presented, uh, and it's got all of the you know, top talking points um, you know, the high level view of what we want to achieve by 2028, um, what our strategic um, priorities are, and what the enables are that will allow us to meet to meet those uh, strategic priorities. Um, there's also a much more detailed pack um, that breaks down into uh, the nitty gritty of the things that sit behind that. Um, so hopefully, um, given that you're all here and you're here to talk about this, um, you know, I, I suspect there's been a bit of interest and a bit of um, consumption of the documents as well. Uh, any questions on the strategic plan before we uh, just jump into what's next? Cool. Uh, so what you can see here is what have been described as our like our key projects, um, you know, the strategic projects and actions, um, and a rough timeline of what uh, we want to achieve them. Um, they're broken down into the build, show, and grow. Uh, strategic um, outcomes uh, and the enablers. Um, so what we need to do to make sure we achieve those outcomes as well. Um, the, the timings on these are more rough guides rather than fixed uh, years. Um, they give us more of a, an idea of what we need to do before we can do other things. Um, and some of those um, we'll talk about on the next page because uh, we talk about you know, what the key projects are for the, the next you know, six to 12 months for ADG uh, and what that looks like. Um, some of those are driven by stuff that's happening, um, like the national team program. Um, hopefully everyone's aware that the Wolf Duff team disc golf world championships, world games, whatever they're called, um, will be in Australia next year. Um, so as part of uh, the strategic plan, one of the things we identified was that we need to have a national team program um, that includes things like a, a you know, policy driven selection process uh, as well um, so that you know we, we don't have any issues um, when we're forming a national team um, any questions here on the, the project metrics before we move on to the, the what's next um, priorities So the first projects that we want to tackle, um, the primary one there is the HR review. Um, there's a lot of admin work that sits uh, in the back end, um, database management that Paul does, 
um, the just countless hours that M as secretary does, um, the communication side of things that, that Ash and other board members put their hours into. Um, and yeah, we're identifying who does what, um, who should do what, and then what the gaps are, um, and you know what we can do to to no. you know, extend no. the personal that we have. Uh, and from that, um, we want to establish terms of reference and working parties. Um, you know, essentially, more subcommittees um, with people keen to help deliver on those next three um, projects that we want to get uh, get done. Any questions before we jump into the three? So the first one uh, is the optimal governance and administrative model um, for what we look like uh, across the country. Um, you know, anyone that's that's playing across different states knows that different states do things differently, clubs do things differently, um, and how they interact with ADG uh, is different as well, depending on what the state structures are. Um, so yeah, that first key priority uh, after we've done our HR review is to work out what that governance model looks like um, and that will you know, drive the structure of you know, what things are you know, further down the track. Um, the second one there I briefly touched on as well uh, regarding the national team program, um, just to get that established to support uh, our teams um, when they play in international events, uh, like the Wolfdorf team event uh, next year. Uh, and then the third one uh, is the national disc sport roles and responsibility matrix. Um, so how we fit um, in disc sports as a whole, um, how we sit within AFTA, um, and then from that, uh, working through uh, an updated memorandum of understanding um, so that you know, the relationship between us and AFTA is mutually beneficial um, and we can outline the key roles and accountabilities um, for us and them uh, over the next five years. So that's the end of the pack we put together, and there's some questions that have come through. Um, if there's any more questions, um, just shout them out. Uh, I'll pop them in chat if you haven't had audio to connect, because I keep getting errors saying that people can't connect to audio. Um, so if you haven't been able to get a mic up and running, feel free to drop it in chat. Uh, em, have you got some of those questions? Yes, I do. The first one says, I'm new to disc golf and keen to become more involved. I like this person. How does one become more involved with ADG? Just ask is probably the, the real question. Um, but you don't have to you know, necessarily jump in at ADG level. Um, get involved at club level, um, at state level. Um, you know, help set up courses for tournaments, help run tournaments. Um, but being involved at any level um, is a huge benefit to the sport. Um, for the people that want to take that step up um, and you know, dedicate a couple of hours on a Tuesday night uh, once a month, um, plus all of those hours of admin that we've talked about, um, feel free to contact us via Facebook um, or email myself or M. Um, our contact details are just on the website. Um, or submit a contact us form if you're interested in joining us. And, we can talk about, you know, what what help we need, um, especially on, on you know, as we start to go through, um, you know, the next the next steps, uh, the strategic plan, identifying where we need people uh, to help. Yeah, I was going to add that I guess when we're putting together working parties, we will probably put out open calls for people to join those, so people can look out for those opportunities if it's something that they're interested in or got experience with that is a great opportunity for people um the next question is um that we indicate that we'll be having more disc golf clubs operating sustainable business models how will adg be providing support to new and existing clubs around this uh to be honest, we don't know the answer that, to that yet because we don't have the governance structures um, and the roles and responsibilities well-defined. Um, we obviously want 
clubs to be successful. Um, we want more clubs. We want them to drive more players playing. We want more courses in the grounds. Um, but we need to define that um, throughout this review process um, that we're very soon to undertake. Um, some ways that we can potentially do it, um, if we get things like um, standardized risk assessment templates for clubs to run events, um, that's a nice and easy thing um, that can be tailored to each state's requirements um, to get those gov governance models um, in place for clubs to know what their roles and their responsibilities are, um, you know, what they're responsible for and accountable for, what they can lean on their state body for. Um, the other thing is with the relationship with AFTA, um, the national integrity framework that is being developed, um, that, uh, that is some pretty solid processes that gives us um, guidelines and policies uh, for a whole suite of things um, as dictated by Sports Australia. Uh, and that includes um, working with children, um, it includes gambling, um, alcohol and drugs in sport, um, the complaints resolution process, uh, and a couple of other ones that I'm certainly forgetting. Um, but yeah, you know, we, they're things that we can help with. Um, we just have to better define that as part of this review process. Um, the next question is around um, that we've identified that um, we could access government funding to grow the sport. Um, is there government funding available for this sort of thing? So I can start to answer that by saying there certainly is for club levels, like uh, our club has certainly accessed government grants to put towards um, courses, getting courses in the ground. Um, we've been quite successful with that. So there's those opportunities for clubs. I guess identifying them and making more clubs aware of those opportunities. Yeah, making clubs aware um, and even state organisations aware uh, is probably something we can do a lot better. Um, at a federal level, it's a bit harder uh, because we are not the national governing body. Um, because we're a member organisation sitting under AFTA. Um, so you know, applying for federal fund funding is a little bit more difficult. Um, but yeah, identifying um, the state and club level stuff is something we can do as well. Um, the next question was um, said that in the plan, we are looking to have a coaching program framework developed um, and implemented but that's not due till 2027, 28. Um, but the sporting schools program is due to be planned for 2025 and 26. And they question whether that is the right way around, whether we need coaches before we have a school program. Yep, so that's a good question. And I guess it's a bit of a chicken and egg discussion. Um, because we are affiliated with AFTA um, as part of their programs, they already have qualified coaches that do go to schools. Um, and a lot of the in-school training isn't necessarily done by um, people specifically qualified. Um, yeah, they outsource their um, ultimate program in schools now. Um, I guess one thing I did question that when we were working on the draft with Mike, um, but one thing is that we are closer to having um, school lesson plans developed than we are to having any coaching resources developed. But I guess as we get closer to those dates, we'll certainly look at the timing of everything. As long as we're moving forward, um, I guess the timing of the projects is not that important as long as we're doing the work and moving forward. Yeah, thanks, Amy. I was just going to say the timing's fluid. Um, I, outsourcing isn't the word I was going to use, but same thing. Um, yeah, and, and that's potentially something we can move towards as well in the future once once the school program becomes more developed, um, it can be outsourced to be delivered to schools. Yeah. Um, there was a question about um, how we will support um, local businesses getting into the disc golf market. Um, yes. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, we have talked about um, potentially having 
um, a list of all of the retailers available on our website. Um, I think that's probably something we should look to do, um, but it's exploded so much over the last couple of years. Um, you know, gone are the days where there was two or three retailers and you chose whichever one had the disc you want or was closest to you. Um, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, providing even just a list um, of who those retailers are uh, will be a benefit. Um, otherwise it's just who you already know. I guess there's lots of sponsorship opportunities for businesses as well. So that's another way to get their name out there, supported. Um, there was a question about um, whether we will develop our own rating system or if we'll leverage off the PDGA's player rating system. I don't think we're looking at developing our own. Everyone's happy with the PDGA. I don't know if everyone's happy with the PDGA yeah. rating system, um, <laughs> but it's the internationally recognised one. Um, and short of you know, developing potential handicap systems for leagues, um, yeah, the, the PDGA rating system is you know, what we'll continue to use. And I guess our tool point system is separate from that, so that's another way that we recognise players. Um, okay, the other question was about Aussie Disc Golf Day um, and whether that could be a set date in the calendar. Um, the person said that it's a significant day for clubs for exposure in their local region, um, but the last few years the date has changed and um, this year their club had um, problems with the day that it was. Um, yeah, so I guess the strategic plan does go into a little bit of um, sort of sorting out our events um, and calendar. That's one of the items there. Um, but... Yeah, I think we, last year, having it in December was a bit of a struggle for people organising it and also with the, um, like, communications around it. There was a lot going on around it. So we tried September this year, which I guess, in a the first one that we ran, we got some feedback on the event and we asked about when it should be held. And September was actually a time that a lot of people identified as being good. Um maybe we need to think about that and do make it more consistent. I guess it's still sort of young and we're trying a few different things with it. Yeah, and, and the other thing we discussed when we decided September this year was just trying to work out what an event like Aussie Disc Golf Day means on the calendar, um, whether it's the bookends that we have after all of the other events are done, um, you know, kind of the lead up to the off season, um, as it were, um, or whether it needed to be earlier so it could be something that, you know, we could potentially use to, I guess, even market the, uh, the ADGC event. Um, so, you know, now we've got this thing where we can go to Blake House and, you know, smashed everyone um, at the Aussie Disc Golf Day. Uh, how will he fare in Poimena, um, you know, when playing head-to-head, -head, things like that. Um, so we don't know uh, the answer yet. Um, it's definitely something where you know, open to engaging with the community yet. Uh, and yeah, that I, I acknowledge the other point in that question uh, that notice was very late this year. Um, given the uh, time and effort that we were putting into the strategic plan, um, it was kind of sitting on the back burner. Um, so yeah, we do apologize for that. Um, but uh, we think it was still a pretty successful event this year. Um, I think the final question was around whether we have intention to establish a risk register, for example, to help clubs with running events and assessing the risk to ADG of affiliating with clubs. Yep, I think I touched briefly on that um, earlier in you know, what we can do to help new clubs uh, get established uh, and a, a formalised risk register um, and assessment process um, is something that we can assist with. Um, the reason we've hesitated a bit in the past is every council is different. Um, their requirements are different. Um, so we, we haven't ever put anything um, set in stone. Um, 
but the general concept of what they all require is the same. Um, so it's definitely you know, a resource that we can work um, to getting together. We'll also add that I think a lot of, um, so developing all that material is going to rely on clubs helping us with that, sharing if they've got a great template that they use, sharing that with us so that we can share it to other clubs. So I think that a big part of implementing this plan will be communicating with clubs about what they have, what they need, um, and seeing what's out there that can be shared in the community. That's all the questions that we had on the form. I don't know if people have sent any through. Um, there's a bit going on in the chat. Um, Reese has asked, I uh, assume to Em and Luke, if we'd be able to share resources around the grants mentioned earlier. Um, <laughs> I, I, yes, I, I've just, I imagine we'll put together what we can. Uh, and and share it out. I can get that out uh, if you guys are able to help me because I don't know anything about it. Um, and yeah, just a bit of feedback again on Aussie Disc Golf Day coming through in the chat, which we can probably all see. Um, but yes, certainly acknowledge it um, made it quite difficult for clubs uh, with last minute notice. So certainly something we've taken on board for next year. Um, I'd imagine Luke and M would echo that and have. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um... There is another question just after that as well. Oh, um, yeah, so scroll down a bit. Um, so Jason's asked, uh, just mentioned that this, um, a lot of the strategies in the plan require specific skill and knowledge. Um, will there be action at a board level utilizing working parties mm -hmm. uh, or, or some of them require recruiting specialists? Um, and the answer to that is all three of those uh, in reality. Um, you know, obviously some of them uh, are sit in, within the knowledge and skill set that we have on the board, whether that's the uh, executive board, uh, the state subcommittee or the tournament subcommittee. Um, you know, there's a, a wide variety of knowledge and skills there. Um, we will absolutely be looking for the, the best qualified people um, to assist uh, on working parties um, that hopefully have that knowledge. Uh, and there's other things that just sit way outside our, our abilities. Um, so I think one of the things in there um is around crm development um you know anyone that's registered for an event uh, or td'd an event and tried to use the adg system knows that uh, it was probably really good 10 years ago when there were only 30 people playing um it's a nightmare now when there's you know, more than a thousand um so no one on the board has the knowledge or skills to build something like that um so it's definitely something um that you know we'll be outsourcing um and you know, whether whether it's to an external vendor or someone in the Australian disc golf community that has that knowledge and skills, um, yeah, we're going to cast the net wide. Um, hopefully, get feedback on experiences that others have had, um, potentially even lean on after, uh, because we know they're going through a CRM process at the moment as well. Um, but yeah, it won't just be something that we rely on the, the current you know dozen or so people that are on the board. I also, can I also acknowledge the um, work that the um, state reps will be doing? So um, I guess they should be like a major port of call between the board and clubs. So if clubs have questions, they can go to their state rep and they'll do a lot of the communicating of where we're up to with it all um, and feedback from the clubs about how it's going. So those state reps, like there's we've got the board and then there's the state rep group so that will do a lot of work for this there's right, been another question about the cost the strategic the cost to do the strategic plan uh, i don't remember the exact dollar figure um but i believe it was around eight thousand eight hundred dollars um for uh, that Kind of six or seven month process that we're engaged with in the Portland Sports Consultancy for.
uh, another one from Reese uh, regarding our relationship with um, AFTA. Um, I would say it's significantly better than it was 10 years ago. Um, the people that are in charge now, um, the current, I guess he's, is he the CEO? Um, he isn't from an after background. Um, so he doesn't come with a lot of the, the, uh, the history that the relationship between after and AAG has had. Um, over the last couple of decades, uh, and he is keen to strengthen that bond where it is mutually beneficial. Um, they're not going to really help us with resources um, unless it's things that they already need to provide. Um, but yeah, they're, they're keen to help us grow because uh, it benefits them as well. I think that part of their strategic plan identified that they need to work on the relationship with us as well. So um, I had a call from Simon Farrow yesterday to discuss some things. So um, there's certainly work that needs to be done on the relationship. Um, I think both sides are willing to put a bit of effort into it. Um, are there any other questions? Okay. Um, I'm happy to stay on for another couple of minutes um, if people have questions, um, if people just want to have a chat. Um, if there's no more questions, though, um, Thank you, everyone that's attended, showed an interest um, you know, in the next five years for Australian Disc Golf. Um, and I look forward to what that looks like um, come 2028. And so thank you all for attending. Uh, shall we just stop the recording there, Em? Sure. I do that. All right.